So here's the slab. Uh, this one's also post tension. I'm really liking this post tension. We're getting a lot less cracking on our slabs, if any. I mean, uh, I checked out a slab yesterday that we poured last week, and there was not a single crack on that thing. They were. Uh, I was there when they were stretching the the cables, and everything looked good. I mean, I'm again. I'm really liking these uh, the post tension results that we're getting. Now. That's not to say that we're not using rebar at all. As you can see right here, that's where our anchor plate is for the columns. And you can see there's a lot of rebar in there. That's all number five rebar. The, uh, the post tension cable is running all the way through. And, uh, you know, they go from one side to the other. Um, you know, here in the beams, we have another cable. So, I mean, it's not to say that we're not using rebar at all. Here's our AC pad, there's rebar in there. Every single one of these uh, plates has a pier underneath with rebar. So even if uh, we were to remove all the concrete around those piers, this building would still stand just fine. It's got plenty of footings here. Uh, again, this is a four inch slab. But you can see all the footings that it has in it, all the support beams. Not all 4-inch slabs are the same. Uh, you know, you can have a 4-inch slab that's meant to be simply a driveway. And that would be also called a 4-inch slab without any interior beams. So, again, not all 4-inch slabs are the same. You can see all the PEX lines in here. This is a shower right here. And you can see where the shower is We dipped the concrete it's a it's a little thicker so that we make sure that we have enough concrete under the shower because it's going to be dropped we have a six mil poly on everything for a vapor barrier so you know that's how it's done this has all been engineered uh, we had a pre-pour inspection yesterday everything looks good so we're ready to pour you can see here how it's anchored to the forms. See, you're supposed to tape all these. What we do is we simply take a sleeve and split it and put it over the cable there at the end. It's full of grease there. So uh, you just don't want to get any concrete on the cable itself because that'll keep it from sliding when they go to tension it. So this is how it's done. When we pour, we're going to make sure that we vibrate the concrete, especially around these anchors. Because this is where they're going to stretch the cables from. You can see the ends of the cables. They stick out out here. So when they pull the forms off, they'll come back and they'll hook a machine there and stretch that cable up to about 7,000 PSI. And they'll do the same to all the cables. And that's why we have to wait for the slab to be at least seven days old. Well, five days really, but five to seven days. And then you can apply full tension to all the cables. So uh, the sun's coming up so uh, I say another hour or so we'll start pouring concrete here's a here's a one thing that's very important every time you have a what I call an inside corner uh, you need these diagonal rebars cracks will always try to develop from that corner in so you always want these diagonals uh, if you have your slab engineered that's a pretty standard thing but anyway don't forget those diagonal bars they will again you will get a crack right here if you don't put them in very important here's the anchor plates that we use these are half inch anchor plates with uh, three quarter inch rods welded to that to that plate so pretty heavy duty all the way through